So, um, yeah, I'm giving the talk on, yeah, parts of the production cycle of VR experiences, um, meaning some software, some tools, uh, and interaction principles. Um, on the software and tools part, I'm going to not go that deep into that, but rather focus on something we have experienced with a um, project we have been developing. Um, and what we kind of experimented with it. Um, yeah, so um, to my person, so I come from a soon to be founded startup called Fragments, um, which I'm gonna be founding with uh, Linda who gave the first talk. Um, my background is not from journalism. I studied computer science in Potsdam, finished um, 2011, then was in the um, a research center for the geosciences in Potsdam, um, working on some sensor integration stuff. And this spring, I started getting into VR, um, mostly playing around with Unity through s some tutorials I got into that, and then through Lawrence's um, uh, workshops that we had on VR, got interested in that. And then he had a great idea of a project um, that I went in with. And yeah, I'm going to be talking a bit about that. Um, so yeah, the production chain. Um, we've heard about a few things already today, um, which it all starts, of course, with some idea and, and some storytelling, scripting. What is it that we want to have as an experience? Is it going to be um, 360 degree video base? Is it CGI? What's the frame we're talking about? Um, what sorts of assets are we going to be needing for this? Um, is it a large room? Is it a museum that we're going to um, have a walkthrough? Is it some out of space experience, a space station? Is it um, not really physical room at all, but rather a room of concepts, ideas, data maybe? Um, so pretty interesting things um, um, that we're building up there. And um, yeah, of course we do have several tools that let's say traditional 3D modeling, rendering tools um, are sort of at the beginning of the chain. Um, plus, there's going to be additional stuff like sound, which I'm not going to be um, going into um, that much. But then, at some point, according to your scripts and what you want to deliver, um, you're going to be managing those assets, comp compositing them, putting them into place, um, scripting behavior onto these objects, um, scripting the observer, the viewer, that's actually going through that experience. Um, and that's where logic comes into, that's where um, also the interaction principles come into, um, not ju just perceiving um, the scene through the head-mounted displays, but also giving some feedback back. And we've heard in, in the previous talks um, about some, some things, some, some implications on that. And of course, there's um, the deployment factor, and uh, that's where tools are really helpful um, in being able to deploy out of the box for several ecosystems like classical personal computers, mobile platforms, or web-based platforms. Um, yeah, and so the main tasks and the first steps is the asset creation. I'm sure you're um, pretty familiar with all the terms. Um, the, the designers get their items that they have to um, give life to, shaping um, the objects, giving them textures, lightning, um, animating certain elements of it, um, doing the rigging, especially for objects that move within themselves, um, modeling joints and all that, um, special effects. So that's um, one part of the um, yeah, creative work behind that, and there's um, uh, the ways to model everything by hand. You can even model the scripting and, and um, all those experiences. Um, you can do capturing, um, as Sven has shown some uh, ways to do that, capture real objects uh, and, and getting them into the um, asset production um, faster, more accurately. Um, and then you take the game engines, which I had shown some examples um, of in the first um, overview process slide. Um, so you basically incorporate um, rendering functions, 
um, you integrate data from, from outside sources, inside sources, um, sound, and then the scripting of all the behavior that um, are in the end then making this scene a VR scene. And of course, um, having the tools um, to um, yeah, model the person inside that's viewing it. Um, and nowadays, you don't have to do the stereoscopic rendering and, and the two cameras and the two um, visions by yourself. So that's what the um, tools are already doing um, today. And, and one of the tools that we've used in the um, production for uh, our projects was um, Unity 3D. It's been around for, uh, I think, like 2004 since 2004, and um, yeah, it's basically the environment we can render this stuff with, that you have um, pre-made things that you can pull into the scene, like standard items, cubes, planes, um, no toruses, so toruses you have to um, incorporate from other um, designing tools if you need them, and in that case here you're um, seeing the um, newly built and not yet finished and not being open for a while Berlin airport um, that out of an idea uh, of Lawrence we've um, decided to create a walkthrough um, and showing some of the scenes where um, delays had come from how did that work together and create a narrative of a person landing there going through the airport um, and um, yeah, experiencing that and, and, and learning about the environment, being there, well, not being able to be there, um, and, <laughs> and learning just about uh, and seeing that uh, life. And with CGI, we can do um, pretty cool things to support that um, information transfer um, later on. Yeah, regarding now the output, um, just the examples you've heard of them, um, head-mounted displays in the larger form factors with um, yeah, regardlessly or supposedly more powerful display um, and, and, and tracking options so like the Oculus Rift, Samsung Gear for the mobile deployments. Um, Sony Morpho is coming up, maybe being renamed. I've heard rumors about that. So that's uh, the tools that we use for um, perceiving things. And then we have um, two interesting input devices, Oculus Touch, um, being in the development, kind of um, comparable to the Leap, um, not the Leap, the, uh, the Wii motion controllers. Uh, so something that you can also physically have in your hand and then still um, get some of the functions of your fingers, how are they behaving. And then Leap Motion being actually a fairly cheap devi device. Um, that's an infrared sensor. Um, just getting an image of your hand within the depth of, say, 20 centimeters above up to, um, say, like 50, 60 might work. Um, so within that window, um, it's recording your hands and calculating um, it in virtual reality position, which is pretty cool because then you have actually, when being in VR, you can see your hands and you do have something that behaves in VR as it does in the real world, um, which is kind of cool because then it helps you um, get in there and, and make parts of the scene already more believable because you do have something to connect to between the physical and the virtual world. Um, yeah. And other deployment and, and forms and ecosystems, there's um, 3JS being a... Um, 3D library um, that you can use down from modeling even. Um, you can completely program meshes, so shapes of objects and, and the textures, um, lightning, all of it. You can do the scene um, uh, yeah, com composition uh, with it and there are already some tools uh, built upon that that make it easier, so some sort of abstraction um, there's a group from um, Finland, Visor. Uh, they have created an online cloud-based tool that you can actually use to program or click and, and drag and drop program um, VR scenes with that use 3JS as a um, backbone with that. And 
for the leap motion controller to integrate that, you can also have a, there's also a lot JavaScript library, leap.js, that you can use to attach the infrared um, controller with. Um, and also for the web ecosystem, as Linda's explained already um, at the introduction, Google's trying to get coverage of the whole um, ecosphere from production until um, distribution, dissemination, sharing, and, and viewing that. And um, on the VR Chrome experiments website, you can also find lots of resources, projects that have been done that are um, in, in that part VR um, and simply viewable um, via the cardboard device. So the um, NASDAQ 3D roller coaster, um, the chart roller coaster that um, Linda showed at the beginning, um, that's also done with that um, 3JS software and then incorporating um, the data in that and modeling that graph. Um, so yeah, pretty cool stuff. So coming back to what we did, um, we worked together with a 3D artist that put the 3D model and together according to what was available for us um, with public plans, sketches, um, images that appeared in newspapers. So then um, recreated um, from the exterior, the main hall, um, uh, the gangways. We visited the ones like the outside of the, um, of the airport to get also uh, an impression of does um, the modeled size and the model space kind of match with what we have seen when we've been there and felt that worked out pretty well. Um, but still, there are um, some rooms in there that are not really clear, so the model still has its blank spots um, that we will have to redefine um, further on in the project. And that's also one of the things I'm going to be coming back in the end, like the, the connection between journalism and 3D content production. Um, what are some of the problems I see there um, still yet? So um, talking about the output again, um, or the platform of perception, um, it's not going to be um, likely that uh, as soon as next spring starts, everybody's going to have an Oculus. So we think that the um, distribution of the cardboards, the cheap viewable animals uh, elements, uh, is going to be much wider. So we w we thought of a uh, controller last way to navigate that scene. Um, so gaze-based interaction came to our heads at first, and we experimented uh, with that a while uh, with text being inside of VR, is it readable? Um, should you rather use more the heads-up display, which kind of goes versus the um, immersion and perception of that scene, the reality? So you wouldn't want to have HUDs too much, but still text is because your head's moving, and you might have those staircase effects. Um, text can be a problem, but then also, why would you want to have text in a, in a real world? Um, sometimes could be useful. Then we thought of some interactive elements that you trigger by just looking at them and have waypoints that you could just walk straight through. Um, we thought of movement also for a while. Um, how much freedom should we give the user in, in, in an environment? Should we use the? Um, should we accept or allow the user to move freely about a scene, or should we rather script things? We decided at first for the. Um, scripting thing, and we made some so-called prefabs, um, kind of things, patterns that worked for us, that we um, could reuse every once in a while, uh, which is pretty handy when using a tool. And things you can also do in CGI pretty well is to animate the environment, um, blending walls out to give look to other um, pieces of that structure that you want to show or have textures that shine through elements. Um, so that was uh, one way we decided to uh, make um, the ventilation system visible from like any point of the, um, of the airport since that's, 
that's one of the topics of interest. Um, I do have a short video of the tour, which I'm just going to be skipping now. We're going to be doing that and, and the showcasing. You can put on the Oculus and then... Um, so we're starting in this plane, and since it's like three minutes long, I'm going to just skip this and come, come back to us later on, and then we'll... Um, and, the, and then you also get the real feeling with the Oculus Rift on. Um, some other things to get content in um, really quickly is to use um, maps, OpenStreetMap, Google Map, um, combined with SketchUp um, to get at least um, a sort of quite detailed um, environment into a scene pretty quickly if you want to cover a story on, on um, say, the... Um, just Colosseum Rome. Say there's some event happening there and you want to cover it and, and create a VR scene real quickly. Grab this stuff and put it up in the scene. It's done, if you're experienced with it, and within five minutes, and then you can go about using um, elements that you've pre-created, placing cars there, um, masses. Maybe there's a demonstration or there's some event going on. and um, So you can do that pretty quickly and then play it out for a web play or... Um, And I've also tried with um, some of the satellite radar topography mission data. Um, that's some tiles of Iceland um, that I imported into Blender um, and then can make that available as real environment and Unity as well. Um, we're also playing around with, uh, in one of our projects, with data in VR, um, representing concepts, mm, topics behind data, but we're going to be here um, hearing some of that in uh, one of the lightning talks as well. Um, pretty interesting. Um, and I do have some things on uh, VR do's and don'ts. We've heard um, a couple of uh, that in the um, earlier talks. Um, what I feel um, is important that not really... I come from a gamer's background, so I'm used to a lot in, um, in perception. I don't really get sick that quickly when, when using the Oculus, um, but it couldn't um, come just from my point of view. And um, there are some guidelines that really help you um, not getting sick. So um, one of the things to um, be doing is that you should be very careful with motion. Um, that you then really have to provide, like in the roller coaster, you see the roller coaster at least uh, as a reference point for your eyes, and, and then it won't really make you that sick any longer. And then it's also what I've learned, it's that you should not have gradual um, change in velocity. You should uh, rather stop and go um, immediately. Because um, as an example, when you're flying in the plane, you don't really feel much of the velocity. But when you're starting and landing, then you would feel it. So it's stop and go, that's one of the things. And also be careful with height in VR, because that could be a problem for um, some people as well. Um, and yeah, I mentioned we're going to be showcasing a bit. Um, and that's also one thing of the last year's um, 3D Leap Jam from Leap Motion. Um, <laughs> which is a pretty interesting thing um, called Spaceless. You're going to be in a space station and they're navigating around a bit with your hands and playing with some items. That was um, last year's um, uh, follow runner-up winner, so it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, some of the links, and I'll open up to discussion. <laughs> 